So, Lord, I beg you to allow us to worship you, to point each other to you today. We need you. Would you bring us to a place of just worshiping you and you alone? We beg you to do that this morning. We love you. We worship you now.
Baptist Church, where hopefully and gratefully uh, that you're here this morning. Hope you're expecting to worship God this morning. Uh, that's the main focus of today. I want to throw a few things out with, to you real quick that probably will not be up on the screen, and I, that means that probably you'll forget, but we'll remind you again. Okay. Okay. Um, where's Alan? Alan is my friend from Louisiana. Uh, you'll get to see him in just a minute. He is going to be leading our Experience in God weekend. Uh, he'll be getting us ready for that. It's coming up in June, um, the end of May, the 1st of June. But I just wanted to say welcome to him. Uh, a few other things real quick. Uh, as you can tell, uh, April 1st began construction around here. And you probably pulled over on this side and went, oh, Lord. Uh, that will probably not be where you're going to be able to park anymore. Now, the handicap, if you can get here, you may be able to park in the handicap spot, but I would say you need to either park in the very north parking lot. If you're a visitor, we got spots right over here for you. Or for us young folks, you can park in the, the far parking lot of the shopping center and hoof it over. <laughs> Way over there, over here. So just keep that in mind. Uh, next Sunday morning after the, April, the 14th, the morning service here, we're having a groundbreaking uh, celebration right out back here. Thank you for that one yell. Yes. Uh, we're going to be right out back, and we're going to do that that Sunday morning right after the service. We want everybody here to be a part of that service there. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Uh, after May the 15th, guess what? You're supposed to say What? Wow, did you hear that? That was awesome. Uh, we're going to have to have our services over in the youth facility. So, so May 19th, listen to me. I know everybody just all of a sudden said, what? Again. May 19th, we'll be over there in the youth center, and this is where we get to know each other better. <laughs> and or we'll have to go to two services. Uh, so just keep that in mind. We'll be over there on May 19th, over there, because this building will be under renovation. Amen? Amen. And oh me. But anyway, uh, one last thing before we welcome one another this morning. I can't see. There's Kevin, and I think Jamie is over in the nursery working this morning. Kevin and Jamie Piper will be celebrating 52 years of marriage this week. Thank you. Like I said... Uh, we always celebrate anybody over 80 in here, so just get ready. If you're over 80, you're going to get called out. And if you have 50 or plus years on the anniversary scale, we will also bring that out. So we want to celebrate in that. So glad you're here this morning. I'm going to pray. Then we're going to stand and welcome those around us. And then we will start into our work. Well, no, I have something different this morning, too. Uh, where uh, Miss Kathy, wherever you're at, you need to come on down and get ready after, as we get ready to stand up and pray and do things. So let's pray. Jesus, we want to say thank you. You are the center of our focus this morning. You are still on the throne. You are still risen, even though uh, we don't celebrate this as Easter Sunday today, but it's still Resurrection Day, and we are so grateful to be able to worship you in truth and in spirit and through the avenue of communion. So today as we partake, may you be glorified in and through our decisions to do this, and may we do it with the right frame of mind. Father, you have your will and way. Be with our praise team as they lead us to you this morning. May we sing like we've never sung before. We just thank you we have an opportunity to do that. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. If you're here, welcome each other this morning. Stand up and say hello to one another.
morning. You can have a seat. I just want to make sure you don't fall. Uh, we're going to do something a little bit different. Uh, if you know me, I'm always wanting to do something different. Where's Vernon at? He'll say amen to that. Uh, so Calvary does a lot with missions around us. And so uh, yesterday we were part of a pregnancy solution. That's one of the uh, ministries we support here. Uh, and I'm going to let Miss Kathy Kelly share with you and then pray for pregnancy solutions this morning. So Miss Kathy's part of uh, pregnancy solutions and a member of Calvary. So take it away. Good morning, family. Um, I'm here to just tell you a little bit about the pregnancy center. Um, closer. Can you hear me? I have a terrible voice. I'm sorry. Um, we, are, we reach out and serve the hurting people with the love of Christ. This love is demonstrated by sharing um, life-affirming alternatives to abortions, ministering healing and reconciliation for those who've had experienced abortions, and, and offering eternal hope in the future of Jesus Christ. I am studying right now to be um, a Bible study leader for girls who've had abortion, so we pray for that, please. Um, to help the dad realize that he has a place at the table, that his fears and his concerns matter, that he is worthy of the same love, encouragement, and support she receives. The center has a way that you can help. We all can help with this one. Um, the center has uh, a new messaging program, and you can register with the center. So if a girl is in the center and that she is abortion-minded, the center will send out a message to pray. It will receive, be received by everybody who has signed up for it so they can pray right then. Um, it's H-O-S-P-Y-N-C. Sorry. Um, also, uh, let me read this here. SB, our, our, our um, 300, has signed by Governor DeSantis on May, on April 13, 2023. However, there is a trigger provision that requires the Florida Supreme Court to rule that the state constitution has no abortion right and or overturning of the state abortion case of interest, the bill does not have a specific effective date. Instead, there is a trigger provision in which the bill becomes effective only upon one of the several possible rulings by the Florida Supreme Court. Um, they, another terrible thing has happened because we know Planned Parenthood has to jump on anything. Oh, I'm getting the okay to leave. Anyway, <laughs> let, me pay, let me pray for the Pregnancy Center, but please look up what the state bill is doing because there's some horrible stuff going on and we need to really pray. Um, Planned Parenthood is busy. So also, before I pray, I just want to mention that there is going to be a diaper drive here um, right from starting now to May 15th. Also, I would like to put a plug in. If anybody quilts, crochets, the center could really use some baby blankets because we give them away to girls who are positive. So let's pray. Father, I just thank you so much that we can come together here as a family, as a church, and support the Pregnancy Center and to love on these girls and to love on these young dads and give them courage and give them support. And I just pray for wisdom for everyone who's working there, volunteering there. And um, Lord, help us just to get the word out that you are our savior and that you love us and there's nothing that we can do that you can't forgive. So Father, we just love you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Let's all stand together. Let's begin to worship the Lord and proclaim his love this morning.
your amazing grace to us, Lord. Thank you for that sacrifice that you shed for us. Sing this out. Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Who breaks the power of sin and darkness? Whose love is mighty and so much
Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy is the King who conquered the grave. Worthy is the Lamb who was slain. Worthy, worthy, worthy. Bless 
blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel. song been singing that past few Sundays. It's called Behold Him. And I uh, want to read to you the writer of this song, Paul Balash, uh, when he was interviewed for this song. Uh, he says that um, it's easy, essential to life in a day and age when busyness and distractions rule our lives. It's essential to be still and behold Him, to ponder and wonder with childlike anticipation. Psalm 4610 says, Be still and know that I am God. He says, I struggle with being in control. Anybody relate to that? Trying to force things to go the way that I think they should. There is much freedom in surrendering control, being still and beholding God, acknowledging that he alone is God. He alone is worthy. He says, I don't want to miss what God is doing in my life and in this generation. I want to see him, hear him, and follow him. He concludes with this, it's important to take our eyes off ourselves and put them on Christ. We spend so much time preoccupied with every detail of our lives, trying to control everything. And it says, the message of this song comes from Scripture, be still and know that I am God. Because he is God and we're not. Amen. He who was before there was light Walked across the pages of time He who made every living thing Behold Him He who heard humanity's cry Left His throne to wake as a child He became like the leaf of us. Behold him. Jesus, Son of God, Messiah, the Lamb, the Roaring Lion. Oh, be still and behold him.
thank you, Lord, for giving us your son. Thank you that we can be still, Lord, and let go of control, Lord. And behold, this morning, see you as the risen Savior. And then we pray. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Good morning. It's good to see all your faces here this morning. Would you uh, join me in praying to the Lord our God? Father, forgive me and forgive us in the areas of our lives, Father, that we are unyielding to you. But, Father, we thank you for helping us to grow, for helping us to have more faith and trust in you, Father. And, Father, as Brother David said and the songs say, in the midst of all of our turmoil, in the midst of all the things that are coming, all the decisions we have to make, and those that we don't want to make. Lord, those are the times that you tell us to be still and to know that you are God, that you control not only those of us who trust in you, But, Lord, you control everything that is happening. You tell us what Satan has meant to bring harm. That if we wait upon you in your timing, you will turn them into good. Lord, your word is full of lives changing. Of you taking control. And bringing things about to bring your plan into existence. Father God, I thank you that your word says you are the living God. The only God. And you are the truth. And Father, yet you became man, as the song said, to be lowly among men. And yet, Father, you are and man, in Jesus Christ, you are the living Christ. You are the king of kings. And Father, your kingdom, the name of Jesus, is stronger than any name. The power of your spirit flows from you, Father, through your Son. And because we have accepted you, Father, it flows into us. Lord, may we come boldly to your throne. May we humbly bow before you. And may we bring a request to you. And may we wait upon you, Father, as you show us your blessings and your plan, not only in our individual lives, but as a corporate body that we call Calvary. And may we open our eyes to see your hand moving all around the world. For, Lord, it is in this we have hope, and our trust is in you. Amen. Thank you, Richard. So you see me in a suit and tie today. Do not get used to that. Um, I've told you, and if you're visiting with us, um, I dress up every once in a while. Uh, I want to dress up when I do a funeral. I want to dress up if they ask me. Now, I know there's some that uh, funerals, they say, don't, don't worry about it, preacher. If you have a town, that's fine. If you don't, that's fine. I've been to weddings where they want you to dress up or they don't want you to dress up. I, um, but I feel like, feel like when I come before the Lord's table, 
I need to put my best on. And so that's the only reason why that you see me in this uh, constraining tie uh, option this morning. Um, and I just think it's something special when we come before the Lord's table. Um, we here at Calvary Baptist do this once a quarter. I know some churches do it every Sunday, uh, you know, to each his own, okay? But the, the key to that is that we do what it says, do this, what? In remembrance of me. And that's the reason why we come to the table today is to remember what he has done for us. So if you have young people, little guys uh, that have not accepted Christ as their personal Lord and Savior, uh, I would, even if it may be you here this morning that have never accepted Christ, I would ask when this plate passes in front of you that you simply pass it on to somebody else. Because as you read in, in God's Word, I have it in my hand this morning, as you read it in God's Word, you can, you can uh, cause conflict in your own life as a result of not partaking in the right manner. So I want to warn you on that this morning. Does everybody understand me? This is yes, this is, I don't know. So I just want you to understand that this morning. So if you have your Bibles this morning, I'm going to ask that you turn with uh, me to Luke chapter 22. Uh, we're also going to be looking at 1 Corinthians 11. But uh, we're going to read this morning from Luke in just a minute, uh, 22. I, I want to encourage you to be here next Sunday. Uh, Probably this will be the big reason why. I will not be preaching next Sunday. There will be a testimony time from uh, our mission trip to, uh, to Nicaragua. So you want to hear and see uh, about that and possibly join in next year as we make another trek down there. Uh, let me ask a question real quick. How many of you men that are married in the room, if you'll be honest with me, can say, I know my wife's birthday? Raise your hand. You're good. Some of you just lied, but you're good. <laughs> Next question would be is, do you remember uh, your anniversary? Ladies, do you remember the anniversary? Okay. Just checking. Just checking. Some people, well, you will only forget once. <laughs> once. You will forget once, and then you will forever will be changed. But we all remember important things, right? Yeah, we, things that are important to us, birthdays, anniversaries, maybe deaths of important people that we held in high esteem in our life, worldwide events. I, I remember right after 9-11 and how everybody said, we'll never forget, and about a month later, everybody forgot, except for those that were living through it. And whether we like it or not, we are forgetful people. It just happens. Um, and it kind of scares me to hear this come from some people at times when you're talking to them about Jesus. And, and they say, well, well, Pastor, I've got plenty of time. Yeah, Brandon, that's exactly what I'm like. Uh, be careful how you say that because you don't know this very day. God could call you into eternity. Notice I said call you into eternity. Some of us may know Jesus and we may be called into eternity with him. But if we don't know Jesus, we're called into eternity in a place called hell. We don't like to hear that. That doesn't make us feel good. But understand one day, our mind will fail us. You'll forget something. You'll mess up on something. Maybe it's because we get older. Maybe it's because we're too busy. Maybe it's because of a disease. And there'll be a day that you may not remember that you need Jesus. It may even be that you never knew that you needed Jesus. So this morning's message will be solely to people that are believers this morning. But there is hope for those that do not know Jesus. You can know him today. But like I said, the message is really for believers in the house. We believe in open communion here at Calvary, which means that if you are a believer and you've been baptized, you can partake of the elements when they're passed. So when it comes your way, if you feel led to 
partake, please take. If you don't, nobody's going to think a second thing about it, and it'll just go on down the line. But just remember, we are gathering today to remember what we celebrated last week. And then we celebrate it today as well. So we're just following some old school thoughts of things that Jesus told us to do. Luke chapter 22. Verse 14. It says, The hour came. He reclined at the table. This is Luke's uh, rendition of the Passover and the institution, instituting of the Lord's Supper. It said, The apostles were with him. Verse 15, he said to them, I have fervently desired to eat this Passover with you before I suffer. For I tell you, I'll not eat it again until the fulfillment of the kingdom of God. Then he took the cup and having given thanks, he said, take this and share it amongst yourselves. For I tell you, from now on, I will not drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God has come. And he took bread, gave thanks, broke it and gave it to them and said, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup after supper and said, This is the cup, the, the new covenant of my blood, which is poured out for you. But look, the hand that of the one betraying me is at the table with me, for the Son of Man will go away as it has been determined. But woe to that man by whom he is betrayed. And so they began to argue among themselves, Could of uh, which one of it could be and who was going to do it. Different um, passages say that he calls out Judas in that. It says, go do what you need to be doing. So this morning we're going to look at three simple things. The first thing we're going to do is what was done. Jesus was doing something that was prepare, preparing for the future. Something that he had done 33 years of his life. And that was celebrate the Passover. If you got your Bible and you want to turn with me in Exodus chapter 12, after all of the things that were done to the Egyptian people, and Pharaoh kept saying, no, you, I won't let you go, one last time he said to them, uh, we want to go, and he says, no. And then God said, well, this is what's going to happen. Uh, I'm going to send the death angel and it's going to kill every firstborn that does not have blood on the lintel or the doorpost of the home. And he told the, the Israelites, this is what you're to do, to find one um, small lamb. Let me go back. I'll read it to you so I don't get anything messed up. He said to the body of Israel... You will slaughter the animal at twilight and take some of the blood and put it on the doorpost and the lintel of the house where they eat. They to eat the meat at night and they should eat it roasted over a fire along with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not any, eat any of it raw or cooked in boiling water, but only roasted over a fire. Its head as well as its legs, its internal organs, you must not... Leave any of it until, tomorrow, uh, until morning. Any part of it left till morning, you must burn. And here's how you must eat it. You must eat it dressed for travel, your sandals on your feet and your staff in your hand. You're to eat it in a hurry. This is the Lord's Passover. So when the death angel would come and they'd see the blood, they would pass over that house. And he said, you're going to celebrate this every year. Every year... At the same time, in the spring, you're going to celebrate this. Now, I don't know about you, but I think a little bit beyond some things. Can you imagine? Now, we can't. But with me, just a, th just a thought. Can you imagine what the, Egypt uh, what the Israelites heard from the Egyptians the next morning when they woke up? The wailing and crying of mamas. Of the hope of a dad demolished. And you know, as human beings, we want to blame somebody. And I can guarantee you they were fed up with Pharaoh. 
fed up. They wanted him. Look at he brought all on. Uh, now, I know this is just my paraphrase of what I think's going on. It's probably t- 100 times worse. But it says that it, when they were to leave that place, they were to ask the Egyptians for anything and everything. And the Egyptians gave them everything to get them out of their land. Hey, can I have that chariot and donkey out back? Sure, get out of here with it. Hey, they left in such a hurry they didn't even have time for the bread to even rise. They were told not to eat bread with uh, leaven in it where it wouldn't rise. This year, April 22nd through the 30th, will be Passover. The Jewish community has served this Passover theme for 3, 000, over 3,000 years. And Jesus, being a devout Jew, knew every step and every observation of this tradition. And that God provided everything this nation needed to leave Egypt. While they were there, Egypt was a massive land, but when they left, it was ransacked and and demolished. I have an author that wrote this, and I may have said this once before. He was reflecting on the Lord's Supper, and he said this, The Lord's Supper is a rehearsal dinner for the ultimate wedding feast with the Lamb of God. He writes, It's meal we are currently currently commune with Jesus through the power of the Spirit. He meets us mysteriously in the bread and wine. Yet, as we meet Him, we are reminded that our... uh, We are reminded that our time with him face-to-face is still yet to come. It's a sort of presence that makes us more palpably aware of his absence. In that sense, the Lord's Supper is a meal that feeds us in order to leave us hungry for more. When we read about it in 1 Corinthians, Paul's really getting on to the church at Corinth because people would come and eat their fill and drink till they got drunk. And he says, don't you have enough room in your own homes to take care of that? The Lord's Supper should remind us of what Christ has done for us, but also about the future glory when he comes to get us. And the community of believers should come together as one body, if you want to say, to strengthen the church, to move us to want more of Jesus. So I asked this question this morning because I want all of us to think about it. If you are a believer here this morning, I ask this question. Do you remember the day that the Lord saved you? Don't answer out loud. I just want you to recollect. Do you remember the day? Everybody should remember the day. And I can remember the time, the place the pastor, or whomever. But it was because of a third grade Sunday school teacher that sparked it all. And by the way, I'm just going to make an aimlessly plug here. It was because of a vacation Bible school that I grew in faith, and we need help with vacation Bible school. Now, I'm shamelessly going to say, if you you can help, see Sarah uh, Beth Campbell. And help out with Vacation Bible School. So that we can see young men and boys and girls cross over from death to life. But if I didn't have a third grade Sunday school teacher. And that dude would had to be really prayed up for a bunch of third grade boys. But I remember all those steps that came along the way to, got me, to get me where I needed to be to accept Christ. And to understand that he is still working on me. He's still working on my behalf. I'm sure he has conversations with God every once in a while. Yes, Lord, I saw what he just said. I'm working on him. But don't point the finger too quick at me. Because he's told me about you. I'm just joking. He told me. Some of y'all really got worried (laughs) just for a second there. I was out to eat this weekend, and I noticed somebody at another table, and I just texted them this little statement, I'm sending the bill your way. 
And all of a sudden, they did this. <laughs> Not going to mention any names, Eddie, but anyway. But it was what was done. Jesus did what he was taught historically as a celebrating the Passover, and he was doing it with his disciples. And this is the amazing thing. Number two, he was what he was preparing to do. He was telling them about what was to come. We know what was to come, but he was telling his disciples because they were clueless. Even though he told them three different times in the Gospel of Mark, I'm going to be handed over, I'm going to go to Jerusalem, they're going to hand me over, this is going to take place, and blah, blah, blah. They just didn't get it. And Jesus fulfilled every Old Testament prophecy that there was. And we even hear him say from the cross, it is finished. Meaning that he had done accomplished everything that he set to do. But in this passage, we see him going from the, the Passover meal into the Lord's Supper and gave the meaning behind it. And I can guarantee you, after this got out, it ruffled all the Jewish feathers. And it, let me be honest with you, it even ruffled his own disciples' feathers. Well, how do you know that, Brother Chuck? Well, if you look in John chapter 6, Jesus was talking about this very thing. He said, I am the bread of life. Anybody heard that before? Say amen. amen. And in John chapter 6, in verse 53, he makes some radical statements. He said, Jesus said to them, Truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of, the Ma Son of Man and drink his blood, you do not have life in yourself. The one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him upon the last day. Because my flesh is true food, and my blood is true drink. And the one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. Oh, I can just see it now. I can see religious people in the back of the room or in the back of the, the, the listening area in the temple saying, The man's lost his mind. If you look down, it even said in verse 6, his own disciples heard this and said, this teaching is hard. Who can accept it? Huh. And, and later on, you'll, you'll note in that same passage, many quit following him because of this teaching. Think about that. But today, we're going to come... Look at a piece of bread that's going to be a symbol of Jesus' flesh. And a cup of juice that will symbolize the blood that was shed on the cross. There was symbolism about everything Jesus spoke about at this final meal. And he all pointed to what he was about to face. All, all for us to benefit from. Every one of us, when we call upon the name of the Lord and partake into his free gift of eternal life, we become his sons and his daughters. The blood symbol, the grape symbolizes the wine, the juice symbolizes the blood of Jesus. The bread, the little piece that we'll have today, will symbolize the flesh of Jesus. But also bread was substance to life. Jesus even helped his, this, uh, this nation of Israel when they come out. They had no food to eat. And so he had this thing come out in, in, on the dew every morning, except for Sabbath. And they said it kind of looked like coriander seed and it tasted like honey and something else. I just tell kids, just imagine, not biscuits, but just pancakes all over the ground. And, and, and they would go out and gather what they needed for a day. And, you know, here again, we want to make our own adjustments and stuff. Some gather too much and the next morning, the, the bowl or what it was in was full of maggots. And God said, you're not listening he said, the only day you gather more is on the day before Sabbath. 
It'll be fine. They, God had to teach them. So we often times have to have visual reminders. Heck, our phones nowadays will remind us of things that should be going on. You can set a reminder. It's the greatest thing ever. But make sure you set the right date. <laughs> Just saying. But also, it was stated in this verse that uh, Old Testament that it was a problem. One day, the uh, Reubenites and Gadites were headed back to their home across the Jordan, and they made a replica of the altar that was there. And the rest of the 12, uh, 10 tribes was ready to go kill them because they thought they were doing something sacrilegious. If you look in Joshua chapter 22, I don't have enough time there. They said, we are making this as a, rem a resemblance, a symbol to remember we belong with you folks. Because there will be a day and age and a time <laughs> in the future that you will say, hey, y'all live over there. That, that river divides us. You don't belong. You have no inheritance with us. But they set up something as a Ebenezer to remember things by. We all need substance to live. I read that we can, I don't know who, but <laughs> some people can live uh, 45 days to two months without any food. Now, the give or take, that depends on your health and all that. The same thing, they said we could live, I don't know how you would, but you could potentially live two to four days without water. And then some people have stated that some people couldn't live no more than three hours without proper shelter. And we all need substance in our lives to help us move forward and remember God provided everything the Israelites needed in the wilderness, bread, water, until they got to the promised land and manna stopped and then the people lived off the land and their livestock that God still provided everything to do. You and I need to remember that God has provided everything for us to get to the promised land. And that promised land is heaven, and he's provided everything for us to get there. We've just got to accept it. So what was done, what he's prepared to do, and remembering what he did. Last week I read from Isaiah 53. I'm not going to take the time to do that this morning, but it talks about even in the Old Testament what Jesus would go through. The, the punishment for our sins. John 19 talks about the fulfillment of God's plan, and he said, it is finished. I said last week in Hebrews chapter 9, I think it's worth bearing again, without the shedding of blood, there is no redemption for sin. This blood thing keeps coming back and back. But let me read something in Ephesians chapter 1 that I ran across this week. It says this, in him we have redemption through his blood. Do you hear that? We have redemption through his blood. The forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace that he richly poured out on us with all wisdom and understanding. He made us, he made known to us the mystery of his will according to the, his good pleasure that he purposed in Christ. At the right time, get this, at the right time to bring everything together in Christ both in heaven both things in heaven and things on earth. It talks about us receiving a inheritance and the promise of the Holy Spirit that goes on from there. He provided all of this. But you and I need to remember this. Paul writes about it in 1 Corinthians verse 6. You probably have heard it before. You may have it lined in your Bible. Don't you know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is within you, that you have from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a price. So glorify God with your body. All of us need reminding and celebrating Christ's resurrection. So I'm asking you this morning, 
before we come to this table, and there's a few things that we need to do. We need to remember what was required. Before we need to do, uh, somebody said it this morning, we need to do a checkup from the neck up. We need to look at our hearts. We need to ask ourselves, do I have any unresolved issues with my brothers and sisters in Christ? If I do, I need to go and take care of it before I come here. Is there a sin in my life that is prohibiting me in any way? Am I willing to let it go? If the answer is no, do not partake of this Lord's Supper. If the answer is yes, and I will do what God's shown me to do, then you partake of it. Listen to what it says about partaking. 1 Corinthians 11 so whenever, so then when whoever eats the bread and drinks of this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of sinning against the body and the blood of the Lord. Verse 28, everyone ought to examine themselves before they eat the bread and drink the cup. For those who eat and drink without discerning the body of Christ eat and drink judgment upon themselves. This is the reason why I say moms and dads don't let your little ones partake. And or for us that are Christ followers, not to partake if we have something unresolved. Paul goes on to say, that is why many of you are weak, sick, and a number, it says, has fallen asleep, which means have died. But if we are we were more concern, uh, discerning with regards to ourselves, we would not come under such judgment. Nevertheless, we are judged in this way by the Lord. We are being disciplined so that we will not be finally condemned in this world. So this morning, I, I ask that we remember what Jesus did. We celebrated it last week. We still celebrate it today. We'll celebrate it from here on out until glory comes. And when we get to glory, guess what? We're going to be doing it every day. A lot of singing, Brother David. No more preaching. Jesus is... Asked us, he's given his sacrifice for us on the cross. He's commanded us to follow him. And then he's also told us, go make disciples. We need to be remembering what Jesus did for us every day. And let me just say this. If we, some of us may think, well, this is no big deal. How could that ever take place? I can guarantee you, some of us sitting in this room today, so I can't ever, back when you were in school, some of you were in school, would say, I could never believe they would ever take prayer out of school. You, you remembered the day that you had prayer in school. But when we forget to stand on God's word and trust him and stand up for God's word, it will be taken away. Not very popular. So let me say this, if you've got a little one sitting beside you, man, you have a great opportunity today, all day, don't call me, sit there with that young one and say, this is why the preacher was so adamant, that you have a relationship with Jesus before you come to this table. And in us as believers should be just saying, God is everything right with me today. So we're going to give you an opportunity before we get here. We're going to have an in, in invitation time that if you want to spread out here and make this an altar before the Lord, that we get on our face and we say, God, you know me. You know I am sinful. There's nothing good in me, but only you have made me worthy. I want you to do that this morning. But please, don't make a mockery out of the Lord's body. Lord Jesus, thank you for today. Thank you for this opportunity that we have to, to come before you and just make things right. Father, I, all morning long, you've been wearing me out on different things. And I, I, I ask the best I can, Lord, take these things away from me. You, you have your way in me. 
So, Father, when I come to this, I have a, a clean heart and mind. Father, I realize that only you can tell us that, and we will truly know it. But Father, I want to give my brothers and sisters, my church family right here, known as Calvary, I want to give them the opportunity, Father, to join me in a way that is special today. To come to you first. Father, thank you for your great love for us. May we do your will when you call us out. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. We're going to sing a song in just a minute. And if that, during that song you feel like God is leading you to do something, I don't want you to worry about anybody sitting or standing beside you. If you need to make things right with Jesus today, please come. Get before him on, on this these steps right here. If you want me to talk and pray with you, I will. But please, search your heart and ask God, what is it, God, that I need to let go of today? Would you stand as we sing? On a hill far away stood an
You may be seated. Uh, and deacons, if you're in the house with me and you're going to serve the Lord's Supper, I want you to come sit right here on the front row. Amber, I want to introduce somebody to you real quick, church. Uh, this is Amber. Uh, she, she has two boys sitting right over there. And, uh, you know, that other guy right there. I baptized him a couple of weeks ago, Stormy. Amber says, I know Jesus Christ is my personal Lord and Savior. And uh, I just, I need to rededicate my life to him. Amen. And so that's what she come forward today for. And also, she stated that she wants to unite with Calvary Baptist Church. So we're excited about that as well. But we're not done with the service yet, so I, I'm proud of you, Amber. And just want to ask you, at the end of the service, I want somebody to find her and say, welcome to our family, okay? And she'll be sitting right over there by Stormy, and uh, please do so. I'm proud of you. Thank you. All right. So now we're getting ready to go into the time where we pass out the, this, the elements here this morning. Um, and I, I, I just say, um, I stand in awe of being able to do this with you, okay? Okay. Uh, so in a moment, when the tray passes your way, you'll notice it's just cups. Um, so you're going to reach in and you're going to grab two cups. <laughs> the top you will see uh, the juice, and on the bottom cup there will be the wafer that's there, okay? So you'll take two cups. I'll ask you to hold it until we have served everybody, and then we come back, we'll have a prayer over that, and then we'll go from there. Amen? Amen. All right, I'm going to ask the deacons if they would please rise. Andy, I'm asking if you would please, sir, uh, uh, pray over the elements this morning as we prepare to hit, give them out. Lord, we thank you for your sacrifice that we're stood here to remember this morning. May we take the elements and be respectful. Forgiven because you were forsaken. I'm accepted. You were I'm alive and well. Your spirit is within me because you died and rose again. I'm forgiven.
It's my joy to honor you in all I do. I honor you in all I do. I honor you. First Corinthians 11, Paul gives instructions. Probably looked a little bit different back then, but listen to what he says. For I received from the Lord what I also pass on to you. On the night the Lord was betrayed, the Lord took the bread. I guess I need some of that myself. He said that he took the bread... I believe, and he broke it and said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, he said he also took the cup and says, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now, I want to stop right there. We're going to take, partake, but I want you to listen to the next verse. So take this cup and this juice in remembrance of him. Listen to this. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death. Till he comes. So today and tomorrow and the next day, you will be proclaiming Jesus wherever you go. I'm going to pray. Brandon's going to come, I'll do a few announcements, and then we will be dismissed after his prayer. Father, thank you that we were able to come to your table today and partake and learn from it. And I just pray that we would take you wherever we go. And we pray these things in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, in honor of the table, we're just going to kind of run through these real quick so we can leave and dwell on uh, the elements. So if you're new, just come to the back. We'll get a, a connection card for you. Um, we don't pass a plate, but we do give. There are places to give. Ask a member if you'd like to give. Um, we met our um, our goal for our Amy Armstrong offering, right shy of 4000 Yep, praise God. Um, also, we still need help um, in the greeter ministry, so see the church officer, Miss Debbie, about that. Next week, we're going to have a groundbreaking ceremony after church. Uh, Pray and go is coming up. All these things are in the back or on the church website, just so you guys know. Uh, the season events, uh, season saints event have something Thursday, April 25th. It'll be in Placida at the Nugents. Um, and as Brother Chuck mentioned, we need help for VBS. Uh, also volunteers for Parents Night Out, which is for Better Together. Um, and the only really two things I want to make a special note of is we need to bring the chairs up. Um, so there's seven high. Um, please do not drag them across the table or the floor. Um, we have some carts that we'll grab. And also, there's a, there's a security meeting that will be in the choir suite afterwards. Okay? Let's pray. Lord, we just thank you so much for who you are and the elements that we get to celebrate as we look back, not just to last week Easter, but as we look back to the cross.